All right, so for this video, uh, bear in mind I'm in a trade right now, so I may start to ramble and start to like, uh, my mind may go elsewhere, but for now, I'll just go on with the video. So basically, um, I looked at 60 stocks on the NASDAQ. I think they're mostly on the NASDAQ. And, uh, <clears throat> and I looked at the best buy prices and the best sell prices and the rate of return you could have got and the next best buys and the next best sells. And basically, um, pretty much all of these were swing trades. Every now and then, you would have stocks that have just dipped so low and then they will skyrocket. So basically, um, the best prices for buying in were generally under a dollar uh, because that's, you know, that's the lowest you can go, right? So but generally under a dollar or a dollar at 36 out of 60 of them were these are all like you know top-notch stocks they're not these are like runners you know they've moved the most that's why i picked them spi uh sun w oxbr orph uh bysi btx bsqr B, blu bbig whatever oh, i'm so glad this is turning out to be a good trade um yeah, so I picked I picked these 60 stocks, I identified these, and I calculated the rate of return. On average, the rate of return was 9,000. 9,000%, um, 9, almost 10,000% actually. And the next best buy, I'm going to give you the interpretation that I, uh, that I came up with. So the next best buy and the next best sell were generally very close, obviously, to the best buy or the best sell. Or they were kind of close, but they were like the next support level for the best buy or the next resistance level, the, the next highest resistance level for the best sell. So for the best, uh, next best buy, it was the next lowest support level. Um, one thing I noticed is that when you closed up on charts, you would also see that like maybe you will get some uh, price volume divergence like you have in Bimra right over here You can see that the price went higher and the volume went lower So I call that price volume divergence when you have the higher price, but the volume did not go higher as well I find that this divergence thing. It's actually a really big deal um, it, it can make or break your trade for example. I traded IMUX the other day and I made a mistake Okay, this is how not to trade so you have the price falling and on the breakout I was like, hey, I want to buy in here because it broke out. No, we didn't see volume break out. So that's bad. So don't trade like this, obviously. Not listen, these are all these are all like principles. They're not rules. So I don't know if they're always gonna turn out like this, but in this case, it did not work out. It kept going down. It didn't have a reversal, and that's what I was looking for. For Palt. Uh, this is an example, uh, a good example of how you uh, could profit from uh, this correction of that mistake. So basically, you see here that it's in a downtrend. The highs are becoming lower, and it's tapping on this line roughly. Uh, and then what you have is you have a breakout. You have two, actually. So you have one over here, kind of, and one over here, definitely. And basically, the breakout occurs... Uh, in volume as well so you see the volume is dropping and then boom volume comes up volume is dropping and then boom volume comes up so oh bimra is not turning out too well i don't know it's in a wedge probably so like i was saying uh yeah you'll get a breakout on price and volume so what ends up happening is the uptrend continues that's basically what happens i don't know maybe there could have been news here or something but um Generally, that's that's what happens. So I actually bought Bimra right here. I think it was around here uh, Yeah, I guess it was uh, Yes, I did unfortunately it fills me at the the highest ask near the highest ask I got I bought it over here because I saw the volume break out So I knew it's gonna go higher. It went higher big surprise Okay, so I had a breakout on volume. It wasn't like a really clear one but it was clear enough for me and it worked out so this is a good way to trade um i also use indicators to trade but this is like 
Uh, I want to get back to the whole 60 thing, okay? So, some notes that I made. Uh, basically, I talked about how uh, how important it is to have a really low buy-in price. Like, if we're going to talk about how good you are as a trader, uh, you know, the, the guy who buys at half of your price, he's twice as good. The guy who buys four times less than your price, he's four times as good. You know, so if you get a really, really low price and the stock price ends up going to like $10, then you have made more than anyone, you know? Uh, the only thing is that you probably won't make more than the guy, the perfect scalper, which basically doesn't exist. The, the perfect scalper who will capture every single upward movement versus the guy who captured just you know the highest and the, the lowest and the highest so there's that uh another thing that can make a really successful trader is the fact that they're treating their their wins like trophies like i find that when i treat my wins like trophies i do like i just keep my my gains that's that's what happens i, I end up keeping my gains and I don't double dip and then uh, I lose all my gains that I that I got. Um, what are some other things? I think I explained everything that I wanted to, did I, didn't I? Oh, probably not actually. I didn't explain one last thing, okay? So basically, um, so if you take ENG for example, this is another stock that I looked at. Okay, um, ENG, it has a bunch of movement, right? Uh, this was the best buy at 0.3 and the best sell was at 18.4. Okay, so that's like a 6,000% return roughly. But if I were to buy here, sell here, buy here, sell here, or buy here, sell here, uh, or like even do day trades for scalps, because even these whole like buy here sell here motions i'm showing you these are these are swing trades the guy who buys at 0.3 and sells at uh eight dollars that guy stuck around for like i don't know how many months you know that's that's a swing too the day trades even like you know you're only capturing one of these candles for a day trade you're generally like you're only capturing like let's say this candle for a day trade for sure like Day trade does not have to deal with this garbage that happens afterwards, but like, you know, if it keeps going up, who cares? You know, you're still gonna do better. So that's why I would suggest, oh, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but like 36 out of the 60 stocks that I looked at, uh, the best buy-in was below a dollar. So generally you're gonna wanna look for stocks that have potential that are over a dollar. Another thing that you might want to look for is like this hill structure or mountain structure beside uh, on the left side of the stock. So for example, like, uh, uh, like, I mean, I think you're going to find that on every stock, but basically what is the opposite? What would the opposite be? I guess the opposite would be like, like let's look at ORPH for a second. ORPH. I think for this stock, like, there wasn't a giant hill. It was just kind of like dead, fell a bit, rose a bit, and then out of nowhere, boom, it just exploded. So I can't say much as to like how to identify the, the, really, the stocks that will really, really run. But what I can say is like, always aim to get a really low price or buying on the red of a long-term trend, uh, long-term, uh, chart because if you buy on the red then you just have you have all this room for gains when it does go up in this case like orph went up to like 80 bucks roughly maybe even higher i don't know and then yeah okay bimra is working out so far um this is a wedge pattern so like i could use this pattern just my knowledge of the fact that i know it's in a wedge to buy and sell at these like uh areas so here, it actually doesn't look like a wedge. It looks more like a pennant, doesn't it? Buy, sell here, buy here, sell here, buy here, sell here. So I could sell here and it will fall later, apparently. And then, you know, that's it. But 
Um, hmm. What else can I talk about? I think that's it. I think that's the, all I wanted to talk about. Um, bear in mind the fact that the average percentage return of a really good swing trader is like 9,000%. That's like, that's like um, achievable. Holy crap, I'm in the stock. <laughs> I'm biting my lip. Um, yeah, you can see that, right? Oh! Woo! We make it, buddy! <laughs> awesome, man. Keep going. Imran, pay me. Oh, this is such a good video. Yes. Bimra. <laughs> oh man. I don't know how long I'm gonna hold this up. <laughs> That's a great way to end a video. Okay, so let's take some profit. Hold on. So holy crap. I knew that was gonna happen. I'll just draw a line here. I gotta be ready to sell in case it drops. It's holding, it's holding. Oh my God. That is nice. That's, that's nice. Dude, look at that. Look at that nice consolidation. Are we going up one more level or what? Oh, oh, did you notice that it doesn't want to touch the bottom? <laughs> this video is awesome. Oh, shit, son. Oh, sick. When do I take profit, damn it? Whenever I want, whenever I'm in the money. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm taking profit. So, yeah. All right. Peace out, guys. That's how you trade.